Y'all go with me here. Seven, six, five, four, three, two, one. Camp, Camp 2023 just started. Right then, right there. We're not beginning camp this afternoon. Uh, youth, preteen, youth, and children's camp all together just started right that second. And we want you to be a part of it because you're not going to be able to enjoy what we're about to be in, able to enjoy. And so would you welcome these students as they come in? Y'all come down. Come on. Well, wherever you're told to sit. Let's do that, okay? Just sit down right there. And so we thought it would be neat. Uh, we thought it would be neat for you to be a part of the first service I'm not going to be preaching, but my son Kyle will kind of be our pastor. He'll be our speaker for the week, and so we'll be introducing him in a little while. But today's service is very, very special. And parents, let me say something to you, okay? Parents, take a deep breath. When you saw your child walk in, you might have started thinking things like, what if they get bored and start running around the sanctuary? If they do, we will handle that. You are not to be under any pressure. Your only responsibility this morning is to let God speak. Let God speak to your heart. That includes you, Peggy. That includes you, Scott, and everybody else that's pulling all the pieces together. To do anything with excellence requires lots of work, Lots of prayer and lots of spiritual warfare. And to Scott and Peggy, who represent the rest of the team, if you're not careful, you'll be so bombarded that you miss the joy of camp. Boys and girls and youth, it is not a burden for us to go. We are so honored that God lets us go to camp with you, and it's going to be a, a few days that you will remember for the rest of your life in a positive way. Now, some of you, and I know our preteens are scattered and our youth are scattered that are going, and some of you aren't able to go, but today you're getting to be a part of camp. We've got, when, when we tell how many people went to camp, we're going to count every one of you, okay? And everybody's going to say, they had the biggest camp in the whole association. Even if you're not able to go, this morning, God's going to speak. He's going to speak through song. He's going to speak through the still, small voice of the Holy Spirit. And He's going to speak through the Word. So, I pray that this morning, God changes your life. Let's go to the Lord in prayer right now. And then we're going to sing. Okay, let's pray. Father, thank you for camp. God, thank you that that is not something we came up with. You instruct us in the Bible to pull away. You instruct us in the Bible to retreat. That does not mean run away and hide. But it does mean to get away from all distraction just like Jesus did, and talk to the Father. Father, we're going to listen to you, and we're expecting you to change our lives, beginning right now. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's worship him. Jesus, 
Praising this morning. Praise his name. Amen. Continue to worship with us this morning.
Father, Lord, I just thank you and I praise you for this day, Lord. Thank you for just allowing us to stand and worship you this morning. Lord, as we continue to worship, Lord, we just be honored and glorified in everything we do this morning. Lord, you move, Lord. Change the lives. We give you all the honor and praise for you. It's in your name. Amen. Psalm 8110 says, I am the Lord your God who brought you up out of Egypt. Open wide your mouth and I will fill it. But my people would not listen to me. Israel would not submit to me, so I gave them over to their stubborn hearts to follow their own device. If my people would but listen to me, if Israel would follow my ways, I quickly would I subdue them and turn my hand those who hate the Lord would cringe before him, and their punishment would last forever. But you would be fed with the finest wheat, with honey from the rock. I would satisfy. He'll satisfy your every need this morning. All you got to do is turn it over to him. Continue to worship with us this morning. Thank you. 
give him a hand. Whew. Praise his name. You may be seated. Church, I realize that this is Memorial Weekend, Memorial Day weekend. Tomorrow is a huge day, and it would be terribly wrong for us not to say a word, just to breeze through as though this is just another Sunday. But I need to ask you to allow me to do something. Next Sunday, next Sunday, I've already got a message that God's put on my heart and it's encouraging about our country. It's encouraging about those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. But because kids camp starts today, because kids camp starts right now, I ask for permission just to change the message and put our Memorial Day message the next week. I hope you'll allow me to do that. Now, boys and girls, the adults are not going to like what I'm about to ask you to do, but I want you to come closer to me, okay? I, I, I want you to come about right in here because I want to look in your eyes and I, I want to talk to you. And, and I said the adults... They were sitting on the pew so they could reach you. And now they might have to get in the floor if they need to. Uh, but we are so thankful for what God's about to do. Now let me tell you something some of you know. In the Bible, from cover to cover, there is a, an animal that God created. And we see a few of them around here. Um, I was on the river, I think it was Thursday night, Suzanne, and uh, we were going down the river in a boat, and somebody said, look at there, there's an eagle, and I looked, and not only was there an eagle in the nest, but there was also a little eaglet sticking its head over the nest, just like that one. Well, here's what you may or may not know. The eagle is mentioned 33 times in the Bible. And anything that's mentioned once in the Bible is worth us paying close attention, Austin. But if it's mentioned 33 times, I believe there's a lesson for us to learn. I want to talk to you about the eagle, but before we do, I know you just sat down. You don't, if we ever ask you to stand and that irritates you, I've got a solution. Just stay seated, all right? Uh, there, don't let it irritate you, just stay seated. Uh, but if you're able and you'd like to, one more time, boys and girls, let's be an example to the adults. Let's stand to our feet in honor of the reading of God's Word. Now, I... I put on the screen as my text just one verse, verse 11, but verse 10 is way too good for us to skip. Henry, listen to what verse 10 says. He found him in a desert land. Kind of like you, Henry. It's like God found him in a desert land. Now stop, and I'm going to try not to chase every thought that comes to mind, but who in this room, you're in a desert land. Who in this room, you feel so out of touch from God? Look at the next description. Not just a desert land, but a wasteland. How many of you are in a wasteland right now? A howling wilderness. When you go to bed tonight, you're ha at night, you're haunted. Your past, your present, your situation, your health. You're, you're just in a wasteland, just in a howling, here's what it says, deacon, howling. Have you ever heard a coyote howl? Uh, I heard old Duke howl the other day when, a, when an ambulance went by. He went, oh, look, God found us in a howling wilderness. And look at what he did when he found us in this bad place. He encircled him. He instructed him. He kept him, look. He kept him, this is what the Bible says, as the apple of his eye. Do you know what? Your mom and dad say that about you. You are the apple of their eye. God does that, buddy. God finds us in the wasteland, and he encircles us, and he puts his eye on us, and he is so proud. 
That includes those that may be with us or watching online and last night you blew it. That includes those that are in this room that are watching online and you're an addict. You're fighting an addiction, alcohol, drugs. That includes those of you, and because the children are not in here, I'm not going to be as graphic, but you've got a, you've got a habit or a hang-up that just is filthy and it's dirty. All right? God's okay with that. He comes to the wasteland. He comes to the howling wilderness, and he, look, he encircles you. He don't stick his finger in your face. He encircles you. And watch. This is a good one for you, Deacon. You are the apple of his eye. Now, here's our text, and I'll preach just a little bit because the adults can't pay attention long, all right? <laughs> Y'all can stay here all day, but the adults, they, they give me about 10 minutes. Watch verse number 11. Here it is. As an eagle stirs up its nest, hovers over its young, spreading out his wings, nine feet, by the way. An eagle's not like this. An eagle is like this. Nine, do it, stretch it out there. Nine feet of wings. Listen to what it says. Spreading out its wings, taking them up and carrying them on his wings. So the Lord alone will lead him. You may be seated. You may be seated. How many of you know my wife, Suzanne? How many of you know Susan? Look at her. Look at her. She won't even make eye contact with me. When she saw that I brought stools up here, I guarantee you her first thought was, oh, no, this is going to be bad. I've never done this, and I wasn't planning to do this, but Suzanne, come up here, and I want you to sit with me. I know you're going to love it, love it, love it, love it. All right? So here, I told my mom yesterday, I said, Mom, or the day before, I said, we're talking about the eagle. And I've said that to a, uh, several of you individually. And what's neat is every time I say we're going to talk about the eagle, like for instance, my mom said, hey, did you know that they mate for life? In other words, a male, a boy, and a girl, I don't know if eagles fall in love, but I know that I did one day, they fall in love, and they don't ever, they don't ever leave each other. Boys and girls, we live in a day that that's not normal. It's not normal, and you're not going to be taught that. But a man and a woman stick together forever. And, and they don't switch around. They stay together forever. I think that's enough said, don't y'all? Hey, every now and then, if you see me going a little too far, just clear your throat, okay? <coughs> Stop, Phil. Uh, but they, they stick together. Now, here's what they do that's ne next, and it's so neat. Both mom and dad begin to build the nest. They decide that they're going to have a family. Because God created the eagle and, look, he created you. And so there's so much we can learn from all that God created. Now, here's something that's interesting. Both mom and dad share the workload. And they start by building a nest. They fly down off of the rock. Let me mention the rock. Did you hear that song just now? Honey from the rock. Now, that was so good. Now, they can't do that very much here in Alabama, but in Alaska, I went to Alaska last June, and eagles would build their nest on the highest rock that they could find. And here's how they do it. They've got a plan. We're going to have a family. They, they don't, huge lesson. Every now and then, y'all just reach out and grab a nugget, Okay. You don't just have a kid. You have a plan. God's got a plan. He's a God of order. And this starts first, all right? Love and a lifetime commitment. And then, are you teaching your children that? Are you teaching your grandchildren that? 
Are you being an example of mating for life and staying with the same person? Just a little nugget. Just reach out and grab it. So they have a plan. Look, and, and here's the plan. We're going to have a family, and they start by building a nest. And listen to how they build the nest. They start with big sticks. I, we, we were on Orange Beach just a few weeks ago, and I saw an eagle, and he had in his claws one of the biggest sticks that I had ever seen. And do you know what he was doing? He was beginning to lay the foundation for the nest. He begins with big sticks, and then he starts getting little bitty sticks. And he takes these little bitty sticks, and he takes some straw, and he takes some mud, and he makes a beautiful nest to have a family. But he does not stop there. Girls, you'll like this. Girls, you'll like this. Do you know what an eagle does next? An eagle then goes and gets a rabbit or whatever kind of animal they can find. And they, they clean the hide. They clean the skin. And kind of like a fur coat, they lay that fur inside the nest. I mean, this is a nice home. Before you know it, let's just say, this is what happened for me and Susu. Two little eggs appeared. And these two little eggs had to be protected. These two little eggs were very special. And so listen real close. This is a little nugget. I'm going to ask you if you remember this tomorrow, okay? Watch this. Both mom and dad take turns sitting on the egg. Did you know turkeys don't do that? Did you know that chickens don't do that? Eagles take turns. The man and the woman taking turns protecting and keeping the eggs warm. <laughs> and then guess what happens? One day, that little egg has a little crack in it. And from that little egg comes a little scrawny eaglet. And mom and dad are so proud. And then, before you know it, the other egg has a little crack. And out from that shell comes another little scrawny little eaglet. Get up here, Deacon. Sit right here. Sit right here. And mom and dad are so proud. Hey, let's just stick with the Bible. That little eaglet is the apple of their eye. They love that little fellow. Now, student. I want to talk to the adults for a minute. Do you know what mom and dad eagle have to do? There's no shortcuts and there's no plan B. This is the only way it works. They have to nourish themselves. They have to st stay strong. Your mom and dad, they have to stay strong. They have to nourish themselves. And then when they're strong, this is kind of going to gross you out a little bit. Do you know what they do? They go and they get some nourishment for you and they chew it up in that. <laughs> <laughs> the little eaglet does not matter, does not mind. But what mom and dad do, little buddy, is they nourish you. And if you've ever watched National Geographic do a special on the eaglet, those little fellas begin to grow. And they begin to grow. And before you know it, what started out to be this big, come up here, come up here, right here, ended up being this big. And so mom and dad sit in the nest. They protect and they nourish. And they watch as the apple of their eye begins to grow. And then one day, and y'all look, you're almost there. I want you to stand up. Then one, stand up, up here, all the way up here. Climb up here. Y'all are boys, you can do it. Climb up here. Then one day, 
Those little eaglets, everybody look, because of the way God made them, let me, let me overemphasize that. Hey, Mama Eaglet, would you be better if you wanted to sit down? Are you good? Are you good? Stay up here. All right, good, good, good. You shouldn't have said that. I just don't want it to be a long few days, all right? <laughs> look, let me overemphasize this. Because, y'all look at me, because I can't see their eyes. Look in my eyes. God made you for greatness. God made you, guys, to make a difference in the world. And so, when those little eaglets begin to grow up, by God's design, they come to the edge. You remember how Brother Phil stands on the edge? Y'all stand on the edge, all right? Let your toes hang off. They come to the edge of the nest every day. And they do like this. And those little eaglets begin to... Are you doing they began to look in the valley. And, and look, they look over here. They see a river that takes their breath away. Look, they see a mountain that is amazing. And these little fellows, deep inside, begin to realize something. There's something out there. Henry? There's something out there that I really want to know. Well, sit down. They come back into the nest. And it's so warm. And it's so soft. And they say, but I sure do like it at home. Mom feeds me. Dad plays with me. And it's just awesome. But listen to the lesson from the eagle. One day, the little eaglets stand up, jump up, and they go to the edge of the rock, Shane, Kelly Lynn. They go to the edge of the rock. They, they're no longer on the nest. They're on the edge of the rock. And do you know what the Bible said? Verse number 11. As an eagle stirreth up the nest. Do you know what mom and dad do? You have not experienced this yet. But you look at me. I know you're, I'm not even being silly. I'm talking to you. I know your mom and dad. And I know that they're going to do this one day. While the little eaglets are looking off the cliff. Do you know what mom and dad do? They take the fur out of the nest. They take the fur out of the nest. And after the little eaglets have stood there for a little while, they decide that they're hungry and they want to go back home. And so they, come on, come on back. They come back to the nest, jump down. And they jump into the, ow! They jump into the nest and the fur is gone. And these sticks begin to stick in them, and they don't understand what changed. The next day, you don't have to get up, they go to the edge of the cliff again, they look off, and while they're gone, do you know what mom and dad do again? They take out all the insides of the nest. They do. And when the eaglets come back, that nest is not as comfortable as it used to be. The third time he does it, they go out to the edge, and do you know what mom and dad do? They do away with the nest. Parents, I can't spend long on this, but here's where we're messing up. God has a plan, and it works 100% of the time. And God's plan is not that you keep them. God's plan. Peggy, I'm sure you're sitting there uh, fighting back tears. I can't see you. But Peggy and many of you saw your baby graduate. And it's hard. But it's part of God's plan. 
And we live in a society that just wants to protect and not let them ever feel any pain and not let them ever just shelter them and never let them go. But that's not God's plan. And so the next morning, and I'm going to speed it up here, so stay with me. The next morning, after a miserable night of no nest, the eaglets go to the edge of the cliff. And look at this. Look at this. They decide they're going to try something. And they don't know what it's going to be like. And do you know what they do? That's it. They jump off the cliff. And for a minute, it is so exciting. It takes their breath away. But all of a sudden, do you know what little eaglets do? They begin to flip and they begin to turn. And they begin to flip and they begin to turn. And they begin to panic. Barry, I know it's not normal for us guys to admit this, but I want to see if you'll be honest with me. Have you ever felt fear? Have you ever felt something that scared you? Brother Phil has. And Kyle is going to be speaking at camp, and he's going to talk about fear, and he's going to talk about things like when you think you're going to fly and it don't work out, you begin to fall. But listen to what the Bible says. As the eagle stirs up the nest, hovers over the young, do you know what your mom and dad, the ones that are doing it right, and I, I know all of you, I met you this morning, I'm so glad you're here. Do you know what parents are supposed to do? Parents are supposed to let you fall. But while you're falling, do you know what mom and dad are doing? Are you ready? Oh! Oh! Th that's a crow, but I don't know how to do an eagle, all right? Oh! And do you know what? Do you know what they're saying? Do you know what mom and dad are saying? They're saying, buddy, I believe in you. Buddy, I know who you are. I know what you can do. They're saying, I know that you're scared. And I know that it, you think you're just about to hit the bottom. But while you're falling, they're hovering over you. And they're cheering you on. Everybody look. This has nothing to do with age. You may be a senior adult sitting in this room. And the very same promise applies to you. You are the apple of God's eye. He will let you fall. But, you ready? Am I boring you? <laughs> Wrong answer. <laughs> you get a prize for honesty you even made Suzanne laugh and I don't like that I'm just kidding what that little eaglet needs to know is that mom and dad can fly faster than the eaglet can fall and here's what the rest of the verse says and it's almost over Mom and dad swoop down. And do you know what little deacon does? Little deacon sinks his claws in mama's back. And do you know what mama does? Mama begins to take those nine feet. That nine foot wingspan. And she scoops up that little eaglet. And she begins to take the apple of her eye. Back up to the rock. We're going to leave at 2 o'clock this afternoon for camp. And, and it's exciting. We're going to have pizza first. We're going to load the vans. It's fun. It's exciting. But there's some of you. You've never left your parent. You've never You've never felt what it feels like to fall. And here's some good news. You can be safe and know that your mom and dad are cheering you on. And something great, Brant, 
is about to happen. Well, let me finish the story. The next day, the very same thing happens. But the eaglets are not about to jump off the rock. They learn their lesson. But they go to the edge, and they look. And do you know what mom and dad do? Mom and dad push them. <laughs> See if you say, I bored you again, all right? Mom and dad push them off the rock. And they fall, and they fall, and they fall. But watch this. This time, they look over here to the right, and they see something they had never seen before. A long wing. And they look over here to the left, and they see another one just like this one. And for the first time ever, Instead of falling, that little eaglet gets some wind under the wings. Y'all do this. That little eaglet gets wind under the wings. Parents, this ought to touch your heart right here. Because this is going to happen. It may happen this week. And if it don't happen this week, it will happen very soon. Your student is going to, for the first time, stop falling and start flying and do you know what that little eagle is never the same because he spends the rest of his life seeing things that he could have never seen if he stayed in the nest can I talk to the adults and then we'll, we'll pray and we'll go home. Are you ready? All adults, listen to me. After this amazing journey happened, Kyle's sitting over there, our oldest. Um, Kyle is flying now. He won't hardly even come visit us anymore unless he gets real hungry. Um, but if he gets real hungry, we'll get a visit about every two months. And I looked at Suzanne one day this week, and I said, we've raised some independent young men, haven't we? They love us, but it is God's plan that they learn to fly on their own. And once they begin to fly on their own, they get to where we are and where you are. It's called the empty nest. And here's what happens to an eagle. And I close with this. They go through a period in their life that their sharp claws that they depend on begin to cover with calcium deposits. Did you know that? Calcium. And look, their beak, their sharp beak has two holes right here so that they can breathe. Everybody do that. An eagle, an eagle can breathe, but do you know what happens during that empty nest period? As they get older, calcium deposits begin to close up those breathing holes. They get heavy. Is anybody in this room, you just feel heavy? And here's what a lot of them do, and I'm, I'm through. They leave the rock. And they go down into the valley. They get weak. And I don't know about the psychology of an eagle, but they look depressed. And a lot of them die. But it's their choice. They can't get through this stage. They die early. They die early because they're depressed. They die early because they've missed their babies. They die early because they don't feel like they have any more purpose. And so, a lot of eagles go down to the valley. They stop eating. And they die because eagles are not meant for the valley. But Deacon, here's the best part. And this is what Suzanne and I want to do with the rest of our life. We're not grieving because our boys have grown up and left. 
we're happy. Makes us sad. We miss them being your age. That's why I love kids camp. I want to be with kids. But you know what a lot of the eagles do that don't die? They take the last little bit of their energy. And they remember where they came from. The rock. And they remember that there's honey in the rock. And with the last little bit of strength they've got, they begin to fly. And with the last little bit of energy they have, they turn that beak to where it all started. And they go back to the rock. And here's what they do. Here's what they do. National Geographic shows this. They take their claws... And they begin to scratch their claws on the rock. And do you know what it does? It breaks off all of that extra weight. The calcium. Do you know what he does with his beak? He takes his beak and he begins to scratch it on the rock. And do you know what it does? It opens those breathing holes. And do you know what that old eagle does? That old eagle gets a second wind. That old eagle that was almost washed up has a season of life where it begins to soar like an eagle. They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall, finish it with me church, mount up with wings like eagles. Let's pray. Father, thank you for the attention that these boys and girls gave. Thank you that we can have fun with each other and we can laugh with each other. And even while we're having fun, we can respect you, our holy God. And we can allow you to teach us. And so this week at camp, we're going to have fun. This week at camp, we're, we're going to laugh and we're going to play games. But we're going to listen to your word speak to us. We believe that we are the apple of your eye. Teach us to fly. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, guys. Now, look, here's what we're going to do. We're going to sing a song. Y'all can get down. And ease back, okay? Ease back to where you were sitting just a minute ago. Where are you in this journey? While some of the younger children may not could have followed all of that, there was probably one point in that story, one point in that story where God spoke to you. I'm not going to try to unpack all those lessons again. But to the parents that are in this room, it is important that you yield to God's plan. It's important that you do not make your child emotionally dependent upon you. I know that gives you a sense of importance, but that is so selfish. Your child is not to be dependent on you for life. It is natural. And it is God's plan that they spread their wings and fly. Some of them need to be nudged. Some of them need to be pushed. Some of you need to strip the fur out of the nest. They're getting mad. But it's the greatest thing you'll ever do. The only other part that I'll mention is that last season. How many of you have gotten heavy? You've been in the howling desert, the howling wilderness, a long time. And you're unhappy. You may even feel like you're spiritually dead. A lot of people are. A lot of church people are dead spiritually. No life. What's the solution? I wish somebody would just yell it out. Go back to the rock. 
That's the only solution. The capital R O C K. Go back to the rock. His name? Louder. His name? The rock's name is Jesus. And if you go back to the rock, you take off all those heavy things that are weighing you down. He'll give you a few more good years. He will let you mount up with wings like eagles. Now, though that was an analogy sermon, that was a, that was a story sermon, the gospel is all that really matters. And that is, we confess with our mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in our heart that God has raised Him from the dead. We can be saved. If you're here this morning and you've never been saved, we offer to you an invitation from God. There's others of you here that God's been speaking to. You've been texting me, you've been calling me, and here's what God's been saying to you. You want to be a part of this church. We don't always say it like this, but we open the doors of this church every service, Wednesday night, Sunday morning, anytime you want to join this church. We open the doors of this church and we say welcome. So, if you want to be saved, if you want to join this church, let's add one more. If you want to just come let this represent the rock, this old altar, come let him take that weight off of you. You're still going to be old. <laughs> I'm still going to be old. Everything in my body aches. And the only thing I dread about camp is the mattresses. I dread it so bad. My body's going to hurt. We're still going to be old. But even in our decrepit little bodies, we can soar like eagles. Let's all stand together. If God's speaking to your heart, these boys and girls will even pray with you. You come and these boys and girls will surround you. And God will hear their prayer, I promise. You come. Carried a burden for too long. Who needs prayer? Who needs to be saved? I wasn't created to bear it alone. I hear your invitation to let it all go. I see it now, I'm laying it down, and I know that I need you. I run to the Father, fall in the grace, I'm done with the hiding, no reason to waste. My heart needs a surgeon, my soul needs a friend, so I'll run to the Father.
parents want to come get your child, take them to the altar. If you want to come get your child, pray with your child. It's a great time to do that. Deep in my chest, your mercy is calling. So I run. 